The Australian hobby is a woodland falcon, well known for its ability to capture other birds in flight. The defining features of a falcon are pointed wings, ability to fly rapidly, large claws to grasp prey, and the distinctive features anatomically are a toothed serration on the upper mandible and a bony baffle within the nares. The aerodynamics of high-speed flight make breathing through the nostril rather difficult, but with a conical baffle in place, a venturi effect is created, allowing fast flyers like the Hobi to breathe while in the attack mode. The fastest of all the falcons is the peregrine. The brown falcon is perhaps the most common falcon found in Australia and goes down to the ground often. The grey falcon is rare. It is a very fast bird, especially considering its size. It is only slightly bigger than the Nankin kestrel, which is the smallest of the Australian falcons. All falcons have magnificent ability to fly. Most of the flight scenes that we will show you here are in slow motion. As falcons are birds of prey, there is a certain hostility shown to all falcons by other bushland birds. And here the miners are certainly giving this brown falcon a hard time. Falcons are observant birds, often found at the top of a tree. Here, this one is on a dead branch, and this is a brown falcon. The brown falcons show a lot of variation in colour. And here with the white speckled chest, a juvenile brown falcon, waiting for the adult to give it a call saying dinner is ready. Look at this brown falcon in flight. Just an amazing gliding action. And now a grey falcon in flight. This is in slow motion. Despite beating his wings fairly rapidly, this grey falcon is flying low to the ground. And the reason for this is that he has a meal on board. Look under the tail feathers and you will see this bird has caught a peaceful dove. It is best seen on takeoff. Most falcons are monogamous and they mate for life. This falcon is flying off to meet its mate and give it a meal. The mate is just a little blur in the sky, but they will alight in a tree to feed. Behind the sticks you can see the grey falcon on the right plucking the feathers. All falcons have abilities to hover. Look at this Nankang kestrel. It's just sitting still against the headwind and all falcons can do this. But the Nankang kestrel is a little bit different. It can do the kite action, but as well as that, even in still air, it can hover with wing flapping to maintain its position over prey on the ground. Here is another example of falcon behavior with a Nankang kestrel. The male has caught a reptile and the female comes up to it, takes the snake and then flies off taking it back to the nest to feed the young, for the female nearly exclusively feeds the chicks. Again in slow motion, here is a peregrine falcon. You can see it is the largest of the falcons. And look at those strong wing flaps, this bird can hike. And look at that glide, it is so fast going into the attack. Again, hoping to get a red-necked avocet, not from off the water, but in the air. The Australian hobby, early in the morning, perched high. He is overlooking a wetland area, hoping for a meal. Around the wetland lagoon, there are quite a few campers and caravans, and a pair of hobbies came regularly to find prey at this point. In 1914, Captain White, after a trip to the interior of Australia, described finding the hobby mostly at wetland areas where the birds came to drink. There were a pair. Here is the first bird, and we will see that this is relatively large, compared to this bird, which is a little lower down. Though there is no change in colour, the only component of sexual dimorphism is the size of the bird, the female being the larger. On this occasion, there was no evidence of them hunting in pairs, both hunting individually. Here is the wetland area, and we will show you an attack over a distance of about 40 metres from the perch at 13 metres high. 
the timer is adjusted to the slow motion video. There the talons extended and the strike. Well that was the attack. At first I thought the hobby had missed the catch as the talon seemed empty but when it flies to the final perch it's a different story. Here I will freeze the video and see if we can see anything in the claws. Nothing obvious. But there it is now on the perch, feeding, so it did catch something. This is a fresh kill, taken in the air, yet there is no plucking of feathers. All falcons, as we notice with the grey falcon, pluck the bird before they eat it. There is a reason why this bird isn't being plucked. It's not a bird, it's a bat. Look at that membrane, it's a bat wing. The bird eats fast. In fact, everything that the Hobie does, it does in a fast way. The ability of this bird to capture a micro bat in flight to me is amazing. It is said that most raptors can read a newspaper at the end of a football field. On the retina at the back of the eye, there is a small depression called the fovea. This is the point of maximum acuity for the eye. And the fovea of a falcon is relatively large. So the central vision of a falcon expands into what we would normally regard as peripheral vision territory. A bird that frequently came to drink at this wetland area was the little firebird. And firebirds, like all other birds, put out a warning call when there was a raptor about. But sometimes the other birds are too busy chasing one another to realise the danger that they are in. So this little firebird standing at the top of a stick ended up in the clutches of the Hobie. I suspect this Hobie could have got a good job at KFC, plucking chickens. The little fryer bird was one of the dominant birds drinking at this water hole, and as you can see, they take a risk doing so. The Hobie catches them in flight, not at the water. It's too risky. If they miss and get into the water, they can easily drown. Another catch. This one is being decapitated before plucking. And another, and this one is definitely a little fryer bird. It's interesting when one looks at the ecology of this water area. It's very hard for young birds to survive. There were all sorts of bird life. Water birds, waders and bush birds coming in to drink. There was also a good collection of small birds, with both chicks and juveniles. Previously in one of the shots I showed the Hobie eating a large insect. But here, with a higher density of bird life, I never saw them eating insects. They fed on birds and the one bat. One chick was eaten while I was observing these birds, and that appeared to be a chick of a native hen. The greater majority of research on the hobby shows that the food that they eat is generally much smaller than they are. So a fly bird is indeed a fairly large bird for this small falcon to attack. The binomial name for the hobby is Falco longipennis. Falco meaning crescent shape for the wing structure or perhaps the bill shape and longipennis for the long primary wing feathers. No lapwing chicks were taken while I was observing these hobies at this water point and there is probably a reason for it. The lapwings first of all give a loud call, chasing away any other potential predator. But there is something special about the masked lapwing in the way it protects its young. The chick or runner can hop up into the bottom feathers of the adult bird and hide 
while the adult remains standing. There are four legs coming out from underneath the adult bird, but the hobby won't see this from a high perch. When the threat has passed, so the chick will have to come out and fend for itself. That concludes this video on the Hobie Falcon. We hope you have enjoyed it, and if you would like to subscribe to the Plumes of Oz, you will be notified of our next release of Australian Birds in the Wild.